untold Islamic miracles. بقدام يطلب ثارة ويرى في الموت بشارة لا يملك غير حجارة لذا بالعزة لما نادى الأقصى دوارة غنى للموت مشوقا ومضى يعزف في ثارة نصب المحتل خداعة أغرى فيه سمسارة صاغ الكلمات وعودا والشاب المكرح Born miraculously in a Christian family, at the age of six months, he began showing inclinations towards Islam. At the age of three years, he denounced his parents' religion and started reciting verses from the Holy Quran and the Prophet's Hadith without being taught by anybody. <laughs> Said John, a true icon of Islam. It was during the summer of 1989 in Merirani village, Arusha region, northern Tanzania, when Miss Rose Melita Kaaya, a devout Christian belonging to the Pentecost denomination, gave birth to a baby boy who did not show signs of life after his delivery. The doctors therefore assumed he was dead and apparently pronounced him so. A few hours later, and quite unexpectedly, this baby sneezed and began crying, clearly showing a sign of life in him, which the doctors had apparently missed during their examination of him. The baby was then taken to church for baptism and he was named Joseph. Joseph's parents, Mr. John Edward and his wife Rose, revealed that whenever they as loyal Christians went to church for prayers with their baby Joseph, by a strange quirk of fate, one of two things would inevitably happen. Joseph would either fall asleep during the entire prayer session and only woke up a minute before they stepped out of church at the end of prayers, or he would cry out so much that they would then be kicked out of church because of the disturbance caused. No one knew the reason for this strange behavior by Joseph, which occurred not once, not twice, but constantly whenever they attended church. When Joseph was three years old, the age at which a child would barely construct proper sentences or differentiate between right and wrong, he asserted that he was a Muslim and never a Christian, thereby denying also that his name was Joseph. He claimed to be Said by name, Allahu Akbar. This was the beginning of a new chapter. He was then heard reciting Arabic-like words and related them to Islam. Being devout Christians, his parents believed that their son Joseph was possessed by evil spirits. Hence, they needed to exorcise these evil spirits from him by prayers in the name of Jesus. With assistance of the village pastor, they embarked upon prayers to cast out the so-called evil spirits. Saidi objected to the prayers and utterly repudiated their claims that he was possessed. Instead, he said assertively that he was a clean and committed Muslim. He was so upset by their claims of evil spirits that he at times cried out so much that he fell unconscious. Seeing this, his father suggested that the prayers be stopped while they sought an alternative way of dealing with that situation. But his mother insisted on the prayers being continued, whatever the consequences. She was anxious about what would happen 
if their fellow Christians came to know what had become of Sadie. She felt it would be embarrassing and shameful to their Christian household. So they felt it would be a good riddance for Saidi to leave their household. His father, Mr. John Edward, traveled with Saidi from Arusha to Dar es Salaam and entrusted Saidi to Mariam Saidi Melita, his niece, who happened to be a Muslim. Mariam took charge of Saidi and lived with him in Dar es Salaam from the age of three. When Mariam heard Saidi reciting psalm verses, being a Muslim, she realized that they were verses from the Holy Quran and Hadith from the Holy Prophet. She, as everybody else, was amazed at this extraordinary incident. She passed word about this tiny boy to some sheikh, such as Sheikh Hilali Shaweji, popularly known as Sheikh Kipozel, and Sheikh Alhad Musa Salim, the regional sheikh of Dar es Salaam. In 1995, Sheikh Saidi John embarked upon preaching in various masajids, beginning with Masjid Tungi in Temeke, Dar es Salaam. He was then invited by the late chief sheikh of the Doma region, Sheikh Ali Khamis Liembe, for a propagation tour of the region. One trip led to another. From Dodoma, he went to Mwanza. From Mwanza, he went to Bukoba, then to Musoma and back to Dar es Salaam. Multitude of invitations kept flowing in. He traveled to Tanga region, covering all its districts. Then he went to Lindi, to Mtwara, and many other regions covering almost 80% of Tanzania for Dawa work. In the year 1999, before traveling to Malawi, both his parents decided to follow their son's footsteps by coming to the fold of Islam. His father John was renamed Hassan and his mother Zainab. The name Saidi John is currently being used for historical and remembrance purposes. Then a trip to Malawi emerged. Sheikh Saidi John visited every corner of Malawi doing dawa activities which amazed many people of different religious denominations there. He even had the privilege of meeting Dr. Bakili Muluzi the then president of the Republic of Malawi. The former president was as impressed as amazed by Sheikh Saidi John that he invited him to the state house and entertained him there. In 2001, Sheikh Saidi John visited Mozambique, a journey that lasted for 11 months. Sheikh Saidi John visited every corner of Mozambique as he did in Malawi. It was a historic event from the perspective of Dawa work, which had never happened before in these two countries. The then president of Mozambique, His Excellency Joachim Chisano, was also curious to meet Sheikh Saidi John. Approximately 28,000 non-Muslims in Mozambique, Malawi, and Tanzania embraced Islam at the hands of Sheikh Saidi John. <laughs> Due to this impact brought about by this legendary Sheikh Saidi John in Mozambique, Muslims there decided to produce mugs with a picture of Sheikh Saidi John on them as an indelible remembrance to them of the visit of this popular sheikh to their country. They still remember him up to this day. In the year 2003, Sheikh Saidi John joined Darul Uloom, a school in Pretoria, South Africa, in order to further his religious as well his, as his secular education. Mark you that until that moment, Sheikh Saidi John had never attended any school or madrasa. Darul Uloom was his first school. It took him six years to complete his primary, secondary, and high school education, thereby graduating as an alim and holder of an idadi 
certificate from Al-Azhar University in Egypt. At the age of 18, he was appointed as a teacher at Darul Uloom, Pretoria, teaching comparative religion, Nahu and Sarf, Hadith and Tafsir al-Quran for about two years. Evidence of his educational qualifications is available if needed. In the spring of 2011, Sheikh Said John returned to his home country, Tanzania, with a view to reviving Dawah activities once again after being away for a long lapse of time. He has formed and registered an organization called Said John Dawah Trust Fund, Sajof, so that he may officially and effectively conduct his Dawah. Since forming that organization, he was invited to Kerala and Bombay in India, where he engaged in a number of dawa activities. In all the a'mal that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had commanded mankind to do from all the ibadats, none of them is Allah subhanahu Sajof wa ta'ala. Sajof, under Sheikh Saeed John as chairman, aims at bringing revolution in dawa work in our vulnerable, on our vulnerable African continent. We only reverted 28,000 people to Islam. We need to revert 28 million people to this region of truth, as quoted by Sheikh Saidi John. Sajof's objectives are to undertake propagative activities which will strengthen Islam and the Muslims spiritually, educationally, and economically to organize and engage in dialogue, workshops, seminars, public meetings, and any other lawful gatherings for the purpose of strengthening and spreading Islam and the Muslim culture, to lobby and advocate for the social, economic, cultural, and spiritual rights of the marginalized groups of society, which include those living in difficult environment, such as street children, widows, orphans, HIV AIDS victims, and the like, to establish and run such institutions, NGOs, dealing with health and education, aiming at providing Sajof's contribution to the welfare of society. Sheikh Said John's wonders of doers are as follows. Apart from all the wonders that Allah had shown through him, Sheikh Saidi John is also gifted with the powers to draw positive results from his supplications to Allah against problems and difficulties arising out of diseases and adversities in life. To mention but few of the successful doers supplicated by the Sheikh for the benefit of the community, the Gaddafi Mosque in Dodoma, central Tanzania, that stands out as the most outstanding mosque in the whole country is a product of his doers. Masjid Rahman in Butiama Musoma, northern Tanzania, where a Tanzanian icon, Mulim Julius Nyerere, was born, is another. So is a masjid in Bagamoyo Majani Mapama another outcome of his doers? And yet again, Masjid Bilal in Kiwarani in Dar es Salaam joins that list. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Holy Quran, And say, truth has arrived and falsehood vanished, for falsehood is by its nature bound to vanish. That is chapter 17 of the Holy Quran, verse 81. This, therefore, is a call to all Muslims worldwide that Allah will no longer send prophets after the Prophet Muhammad to guide mankind, but he promised to show us his signs, and this is one of his major signs. Come one, come all to the truth of Islam.